So this video, I will talk about when and how do you need to design OSPF, right? So OSPF is a, is a complicated IGP and it takes a while to take a grasp and understand how OSPF works. Most, most of the small and medium enterprises uses OSPF uh, simply, but in the large enterprises, you have to think through uh, how you implement or design the OSPF network. I'm just gonna talk, I'm not gonna go very deep into the LSA types and, and all that good stuff, but just as a rule of thumb, uh, when you are looking at OSPF, what are some of the things that you got to look for when you're designing or looking at a design as far as OSPF is concerned? So, you know, from my experience, I think the first thing that you got to look at is if you have a network that is small enough that has your core routers connected together and they could be uh, geographically separate or together doesn't matter if these are your core routers and you have them like this your your local area network or your network is hanging off your core network you don't have any distribution routers right so these could be hundreds of them here right here you like this so your your local area networks or VLANs are just hanging off the core in a given campus obviously geographically different as is large networks but let's just say in a given campus your core routers are directly hanging off lands with printers workstations servers uh, let it be hundreds of them right so in this scenario what you're going to do is you're not going to make things complicated and you're going to have one single area implemented in this network where you don't need to think about implementing multiple areas this is going to be one single area and that has to be area zero right now, uh, you would probably see that, or you, a thought may come across your head that, hey, I can make this link area zero and all the other VLANs as area one, two, three. It's not gonna achieve you anything uh, because you don't have any routers hanging off your core routers, right? You don't have this stuff. Now, if the topology is larger than what you have here, right? Let's say you got your core routers and they are big enough routers that would be peering with your distribution routers and those distribution routers have the local area networks hanging off them, right? If that is the case, then your OSPF these are your core, these are your distributions. In this topology, you may consider, and this could be multiple distributions, I'm just getting, trying to simplify things, right? So basically the local area networks are hanging off here, off your distributions, and this could be like, okay, I have another distribution. If you just have one distribution, you might as well collapse all of your local area networks to your core. But typically, if you have distributions, that means you have at least two or more distributions that are hanging off with your local area networks, right? So if you have a topology like this, where you have core routers and then you have multiple distribution routers, in this case, you would want to have an area that's gonna go like this, multiple area OSPF design, right? So you've got your area zero between the core routers and then multiple different areas going 
between the distribution core. So now your area zero is here. And then this could be area one. And this could be area two. Why is that? Um, because with OSPF, what you can do with multiple areas is actually simplify your OSPF topology and, and performance. So now if you have something like this, you can create area one to be stub where, or totally stub where this core router would only give out quad zero, a default, so that you don't have to flood all these routes, route N1, N2, N3, network one, two, three, they're all getting flooded into these routers, right? They, they could be hundreds of these or tens of these. So if you don't want to flood, because this could be a printer here, that goes to sleep, you're not using it, right? If it's a printer that goes to sleep, that network will flap, and that could be happening anywhere where the printers are hanging in. So that up and down of link gets flooded from area two all the way to area zero and area one. You don't need that. So if you have this, and you know, each time a link flaps, there is CPU crunch, memory leaks, that may cause the router to not function optimally. And obviously it depends on how large the network is. But to avoid this stuff, the you know, instability in printers or what have you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create stub areas or totally stubby areas where you have, uh, you can summarize, you can basically send a default route into this area so that these distribution routers do not get all the N1 routes into them. They don't need it because they all they need is if I if this workstation needs to go to this printer or this server here, where do I go? I have a quad zero from core, it's directly gonna go there. So and and if you wanna if you have a full mesh and all that stuff, the quad zero would still work. If this fails, this quad zero is gonna come through this. So, <clears throat> like I said, if you have a topology where your local area networks is essentially hanging off your core, you don't need multiple areas. You can just live with area zero. Area zero is must. Uh, or, you know, you can technically say I can go with area one and two, but you know, then you cannot have multiple areas. So area zero between core and you're done with distribution routers and core routers uh, you might want to design your ospf areas to be separate so that you can do some filtering you can do some summarization summarization is always tricky because um, it requires your network to be well designed so i'll give you an example if you have this guy to be 10 1.1.0 1 slash 24 and you got this network to be 101.2.0. This is a well-designed network so far, 10.1, 10.1, and you're just incrementing per VLAN, one, two, and then this one is 10.1.3 slash 24, and then this one is 10.1.4 slash 24. If you have something well-designed to begin with, what you can do is you can summarize. You can summarize these networks on your core because your core is an ABR, area border router. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna let you summarize saying for any 10-1, come to me. So you're gonna send the summary from this core one router towards core two saying any 10-1 come to me and any instability here would not be flooded here and similarly if you have this guy as 10 2 1.0 10 2.2.0 10 2.2.0 
2.3.0. See how well planned and designed these are. You, you would hardly see this uh, if you do have something like this in large uh, networks. You're lucky, but most of the time it's an evolving uh, network which doesn't permit well designed uh, addressing. So let's just say you got these in this area that will permit you to do a summarization from this guy to say for any 10-2, come to me. So you send the summary out, so he will get 10-2 in his routing table and he will get 10-1 in his routing table and you have a great stable network which would not affect each other's area for any instability that's happening in your network. Um, but if you cannot summarize, you can always do stub, totally stub on both sides so that only quad zero comes in to the distribution router. That way you filter all the uh, LSAs and you just make this a totally stubby areas. And, and that also depends on the fact that um, your van and internet connection, if they go out like this, then uh, that's not going to work. The quad zero then would be coming from here. So you have to be careful that your internet connection and man connections are all coming through this area so that you can, you know, populate quad zero towards your area. So that's basically what you could use from a high level perspective to see um, that you don't want to overcomplicate your OSPF designs. If you do have a use case like this one, uh, you can and you can optimize by summarization or making the other areas totally stubby or stubby areas. Hope this helps.